open your Bibles, please, to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And we're going to be talking this morning about the laws of abundance. There are certain laws that God has instituted in the earth. Okay, that govern abundance. How many are interested? Like we already said, you can't be a blessing if you aren't blessed. You can do more for God with than you can without. So don't ever become satisfied with where you're at. Always reach for more in God. Not because you're greedy, but because you're a giver. And you want to be a blessing. Amen. Praise God. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7 says, As you abound in everything, in faith, say in faith, and in utterance, and knowledge, and all diligence, and your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. Say grace. Now, what grace is he talking about here? We'll look at verse 9, and we'll find out what he's talking about. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, say he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Now, Jesus was not broke while he was here on the earth. You cannot feed 20,000 people if you're broke, broke people don't do that. Amen. And when it came time to pay his taxes, he said, Peter, go to the lake, put in your fishing pole. First fish that comes up, open his mouth. There'll be enough money in the fish's mouth to pay your and my taxes. Broke people don't do that. Blessed people do that. And when he went to the cross, the Roman soldiers cast lots to see who'd get his robe. He wore the finest robe of his day, the finest attire of his day. And he rode a donkey, which is like riding a Cadillac in his day. Don't tell me he was broke. And when he was about two years old, they came to celebrate Christmas, and they brought, I'm just paraphrasing here, they brought gifts, frankincense, and myrrh. In modern-day currency, totaled about $300,000. He was not a broke man. That comes from religion and tradition and denomination, not from the Word of God. Preachers preach that stuff. That's where it comes from. Pretty good preaching. He wasn't broke. No. He took his poverty, you're in my poverty, at the cross. This is a redemptive scripture here. He became poor at the cross. Yeah. He was naked yeah. before God, before the whole world. They stripped him of his dignity. Did it for you and for me. Had a thorn of crowns pressed into his scalp, blood squirted out. The thorns that came up after Adam's sin represented the curse, the hard life. Amen. He redeemed us from the hard life. Took that crown, the thorny, thorny branches that was pressed into his scalp and blood squirted out. Did it to redeem you from the hard life. Thrust a spear into his side and blood squirted out. Did that for us, hallelujah. hallelujah. Did that for us, hallelujah. Lord. Took our poverty. That ye through his poverty might be broke, rich. rich. Well, if the word says I'm rich, Sandy, well then bless God I am. Yes. I'm going to say I'm rich then. Yes. I'm not going to be ashamed to say that. I'm going to keep saying that because the word of God says it. Yes. Pretty good preaching this morning, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Now, how do we tap this grace that's been released at the cross that we might be raised? How do we tap it? Well, look at chapter 9, verse 6. This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Do you see that in your word, in your Bible? Verse 7. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a fearful giver. Is that what your word, your Bible says? <laughs> for God loveth a tearful giver. No. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. I appreciate that. <laughs> Amen. For God, <laughs> for God loveth a cheerful giver, not a taker, a giver. Are you a taker or are you a giver? I have found out there's two kinds of people in the body of Christ, producers and consumers. Which one are you? Which camp are you in? Are you producing or are you consuming? <laughs> I'm looking at a bunch of producers this morning. So I'm a producer. I declare that over you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. And verse 8, and God is able. Thank God he's able. He's faithful and he's able to make all grace abound. Say abound. Towards you, towards you. That you always have in all sufficiency, in all things, may abound to every good work. You know, I was down in my office yesterday. And I was writing out my sermon outline. Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, throw that away. He said, that's not me, that's you. He said, throw that away. And I was, I was halfway done. I was on page three already. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I've put a lot of work into this. He said, well, that's not me. That's, he said, that's not you. He said, that's not me, that's you. So I threw it away. He said, he gave me the scripture. He said, write these down. He said, no notes, just preach off of them. Let me use you. Let me flow through you. And I said, okay. I said, okay, Lord. So here we go. Here we go. You fill in the spaces. You fill in the gaps. <laughs> Amen. He said, you got to trust me when you go up to the pulpit. You can't just rely on those notes. You got to trust the Holy Ghost. I mean, I thought something might have, might have happened. I fasted three days this week. I thought, surely something's going to happen when I get in the pulpit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, to God. Glory to God. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. Every good work. That right there, verse 8 there, is the definition of prosperity right there. Just abounding in everything. Having more than enough to meet your needs. More than enough to pay your bills. Enough left over to bless somebody else like Lisa. Both Lisas. All the Lisas. Hi, Mary. Lisa's are in here. And Rosha, too. All of you, praise God. Amen. Should be blessed. Should be blessed. Praise God. <laughs> now... Let's go to um, the book of Genesis chapter 8, please. Genesis chapter 8. Um, God instituted the law of seed time and harvest way back in the beginning. This is not my idea. It's not some preacher's idea that flies an airplane. This is God's idea in how for you to prosper and how for you to come out of poverty and how for you to break the back of poverty. You do it through your giving. It's the law. It's the law. It's the law of abundance. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat 
and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Hallelujah. You see that? Well, do we still have cold and heat? Do we still have summer and winter? We do have, don't we? Therefore, we still have the law of seed time and harvest. It is a law. It's a law. Just like gravity is a natural law, seed time and harvest is a spiritual law that works both in the spiritual and the natural as well. Amen? Praise God. Now, go to uh, Luke chapter 6. Even Jesus preached this stuff. I said, even Jesus preached this stuff. You think preachers would know better than to preach poverty. Jesus preached prosperity. Jews know about this. It's Christians that have been talked out of it. At church is where they get talked out of it at. Jews know about the blessing. Christians know about struggling and suffering. Jesus suffered for us, hallelujah. Amen. So you don't got to suffer and struggle. Hallelujah. But you can live in victory, praise God. Amen. Every prayer, every fast should be conducted from a place of victory, praise God. Not trying to get the victory but operating from a place of victory. Praying from that place. Fasting from that place. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, verse 38, Luke chapter 6, Give, and you shall go broke. Is that what he said? No, he said, give, and listen to this, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. I love that. Press down. And shake it together. You know, if you were to set a cup on my pulpit here and pour some marshmallows into it, and now it's full, if I pressed them down, you can get more marshmallows in there. And then shake it a little bit, you can get some more in there. Press down. Shake it together. And... Running over, that's overflow. That's abundance. Thank you, sister. Shall men, that include women too, shall men give into your bosom. Talk about money here. Give into your bosom for the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now, you're, you're giving... actually affects you now and throughout all eternity. You're giving this. That's how power, because it's a spiritual act. Go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, and you'll see it. And uh, look at verse uh, 20, 28. Peter began to say to him, Referring to Jesus there. Lo, we have left all and are following you. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel's sake. Verse 30, But he shall receive a hundredfold. A hundredfold. This is a promise, a blood-backed promise, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus shed his blood to get this promise to you. Yes, he but he shall receive a hundredfold now, now, yeah. now, in this time, right now, down here. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Uh oh, with persecution. People can talk ugly about you. Just love on them, pray for them, bless them. Just bless them. 
and bless him and bless him. Don't get, don't get mad at him. Bless him. Walk in love. Walk in love. And in the world to come, eternal life. So when you sow a seed, your money works for you down here. It's going to work for you throughout all eternity. So make sure you're a giver and that you're not stingy. Because your money will just going to keep on working for you. Can you say amen to that? Now, somebody said, well, because I hear this, you know, as, as a pastor, I hear this a lot from, from Christians and even, even from some preachers, unfortunately, that don't know the word of God. Well, I don't really give to get. I just give because I love, I love Jesus. That's why I give. Now, what would you think if a farmer said that? Well, I don't, I don't plant a crop to get a harvest. I plant a crop just because I enjoy farming. You think, man, that farmer's nuts. That farmer's crazy. That farmer's stupid. Wouldn't you think that of that farmer? I don't know of any farmer that plants a crop and does not believe for a harvest. Whether they're a Christian or non-Christian, they plant a crop to get a harvest. It's amazing to me how the Christians will fight for prosperity in the natural realm, but they'll resist in the spiritual realm. If they don't get that raise, they get mad at their boss. You greedy thing, you. Get mad at your boss over money. They get that raise, they get happy. Go out and celebrate. But now, I would never give them to the kingdom don't expect a return on it, though. See, you're, you're fighting for your money in the natural, but you won't fight for it in the spiritual, which is where you're supposed to fight for it at. Yeah. Poverty is a demon. Yeah. You can break that demon of poverty through your giving, praise God. You can get that thing off your back but through your giving. I mean, Chris and I have more than one, and more than once, put a thousand dollars into giving a thousand dollars to a preacher. We've done that more than once. We've done it even to individuals more than once, giving a thousand dollars. You can't outgive God. You can't out, I say you can't outgive God, hallelujah. We don't do it to draw attention to ourselves. We do it in obedience to the word of God. And we always get a return. We're supposed to get a return. We're supposed to believe for a return. To give and not expect something in return, you're under deception. Go to Galatians chapter 6. <laughs> Go to Galatians chapter 6. And um, <laughs> look at verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also reap. Some say, well, I don't give to get a gift because I love God. You just mock God. Because God said if you give to him, you're going to get a return. Yeah. If you weren't to expect a return, why do you say you would get one then? I'm simply believing that God will honor his word when I give in faith, expecting a return. Never sow a seed religiously. Always sow a seed with expectation. I mean, bless God, you wrap every seed with faith and expectation. When your harvest comes in, you unwrap it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be worrying well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That means you don't give up on your harvest because you gave one time and now you aren't a millionaire yet. You got to stay with it. Amen. God gives seed to the sower, not seed to someone who sowed one time. Yeah. He gives seed to the sower. That means you got to keep sowing. He'll give you more seed. That's right. yes, he will. And when God blesses, you find out, God, is this a seed or is this my harvest? Yeah. It could be a seed to sow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now then. Always see your job 
not as your source. God's your source of supply, not your job. Your job is simply your seed bin. That's where you go to work to gather seed to sow. Scripture, please. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And look at verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give. That he may have to give to him that needeth. So when you go to work, you're gathering seed to sow. You don't work to live. You work to give, and you give to live. Jesus said, the word says, in him we live and move and have our being, praise God. Amen? So you're working for a giving, not for a living. Now, last scripture. Go to um, Amos. I can find it here. Amos chapter 9. And uh, look at verse 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Now, I'm going to read to you what it says in the Amplified. Did you wear your shouting clothes this morning? Hmm? Listen to this. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the one who gathers the harvest. Ooh, glory to God. And the one who treads the grapes shall overtake him who sows the seed, for the harvest continues until the planting time comes. Glory to God. When the mountains will drip sweet wine and all the hills shall melt, that is, everything that was once barren will overflow with streams of blessing. Praise God. Amen. That's where you're headed. You just keep tithing and keep sowing and keep coming and keep tithing and keep sowing and keep giving and watch God promote you, praise God, in his kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's stand up. I'm going to um, speak the word for blessing over you. Amen. And I want you to expect a harvest from the seeds you've been sowing. If you've not been tithing, just repent. Start today. That's all you got to do. He's not like the IRS. He won't make you pay your back tithes. I preached this sermon one time at New Life many, many years ago up in Urbana. One brother, precious brother, he was our youth pastor. He never saw this stuff in the Word of God before. He got under such conviction, he not only started tithing, he gave his back tithe. We had the largest offering at that time that we'd ever received at New Life. Just by preaching on tithing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Still love your pastor? This is all in the script. This is all in the Word of God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For blessing this precious family, Lord. These precious families here who gathered together today, Lord, to hear your word. To hear the word of the Lord, Father, as we exalt the name of Jesus and preach the word of faith. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare every family represented here this morning is blessed and not cursed. And their seeds, if they've been sown in your kingdom, will come up and they shall reap a bountiful harvest in Jesus' name. So I say to you in the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name.